Life Gain is one of the oldest effects in Magic, appearing all the way in the first set of the game. It's a pretty natural mechanic to add to your game, as most games where players can lose life give them ways to gain life as well. However, Life Gain is pretty infamous in Magic for not being too good. And today, we're going to go over why the mechanic failed. From a new player's perspective, gaining life seems like a really good deal. It's usually costed quite a bit cheaper than dealing damage to your opponent. In Magic, the person who's at lower life total is usually the one losing the game, as they're usually being attacked by a bunch of creatures they can't block. So, wouldn't gaining life and having more life than your opponent mean that you're winning? This usually doesn't actually pan out for a large number of reasons. The main issue is card advantage. Card advantage is a term used to refer to how many cards each player has access to at any given time. So if one player has more cards in their hand than their opponent, and neither player has anything besides lands on board, then the player with more cards in their hand has card advantage, because they have more cards to play with. Now, permanents in play are usually counted towards card advantage as well. If one player has a creature on board and their opponent doesn't, and both players have the same number of cards in hand, the player with the creatures has more card advantage. Their opponent either needs to use a card from their hand to remove their opponent's creature, or play a creature themselves to reach parity on board, which means they'll have to use a card and end up one card behind, meaning they'll end up behind on card advantage. The ins and outs of this can be discussed endlessly, but the gist is that anytime one player draws multiple cards or answers multiple other cards while using fewer cards, they end up going ahead in card advantage. And if cards go from the board or a player's hand to the graveyard, exile, or the library without your opponent giving up a card, that player is losing card advantage. We're bringing all this up because playing a life gain card always means you lose card advantage. You use a card from your hand and don't affect any cards on the board. You basically use a whole card just to get some more life. Well then, what's so bad about that? Sure, we lose card advantage, but life is a resource, and getting more of that resource can be useful. And this is technically true, but the life you gain very rarely matters. If you think about the rest of the context surrounding a situation where gaining life would seem useful, you'll quickly realize you're only delaying the inevitable. The most common scenario where you'll want to gain life is when your opponent has enough creatures to attack you for lethal on your next turn. If your opponent has creatures with a total power of 6 on board and you have 6 life, gaining life can save you and give you another turn to play. The issue is that while using a life gain card might save you, it won't change your situation. Your opponent will still be close to killing you with combat, and you'll just be down a card for no reason. More likely than not, you'll just die on your opponent's next turn. However, if you had used that card to play a removal spell or a creature of your own, you could prevent enough damage by blocking or killing a creature to survive anyway, except now you either have a blocker or your opponent has fewer creatures, meaning you've actually advanced your board state and still survived the turn. You will need to actually dig yourself out of the hole eventually, and the only way to do that is to remove your opponent's board or make yours better. Trying to outheal your opponent's damage isn't usually practical, because they'll be able to just keep adding to the board and doing more and more damage every turn, and eventually you'll run out of life gain cards, or not be able to gain more life than they can deal damage. So, in the most common board states, life gain cards aren't actually good at saving you when compared to other cards. However, there is one very specific matchup where they're actually pretty good. Burn decks. Burn decks try to kill their opponent by casting a bunch of spells like Lava Spike and Lightning Bolt, dealing a full 20 damage to their opponent with their burn spells. Now, this strategy has a similar pitfall to trying to play life gain cards. It means you're constantly losing card advantage. Using a full card to do nothing besides changing a player's life total means you're essentially wasting that card. However, burn decks have been much more successful, because the speed at which they can burn their opponent to death is far faster than most decks can win the game or find a way to stop them. And besides, who cares how many cards are left in your opponent's hand if they're dead? However, you may remember me saying that life gain cards are usually priced more aggressively than burn cards. Cards like Chaplain's Blessing can give you 5 life for 1 mana, while the best rate for burning your opponent is usually 3 damage for 1 mana, as seen on cards like Bolt and Lava Spike. This means that if you're casting life gain cards and your opponent is casting burn spells, you'll be able to gain more life than they're dealing damage. Combine this with the fact that you're both losing card advantage at the same time, and the player casting life gain has the advantage. This is so important in the matchup that burn decks often main toward mediocre burn cards like Skullcrack, specifically because it can stop your opponent from gaining life. A well-timed skull crack can be the difference between a burn player winning and losing a match against an opponent with life gain cards. This is one of the main ways that life gain cards have seen play over the years, as sideboard options to help stave off burn decks. Burn has always been a pretty competent strategy in formats like Modern, and pops up pretty frequently in standard formats, so life gain effects have seen sideboard play in decks that need to shore up the matchup. Now, going through all of this, it's doubtful whether or not life gain could really be called a failed mechanic. Life gain cards are a bit of a noob trap, but they're still relevant to competitive play. The effect is better described as niche rather than useless. However, the issue is how the mechanic has been treated over the years, especially in the early days of the game. In Magic, there are things called cycles. 
These are usually groups of five cards that all have something in common and are usually used to communicate what certain color combinations did in Ascent. For example, the Ascendancies were a cycle of enchantments that all corresponded to one of the cons of the cons of Tarkir. They all cost one mana of each of the cons colors and did something that synergizes the color combination in the set. For example, Abazan Ascendancy has the abilities where it puts a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control when it enters the battlefield. And whenever a non-token creature you control dies, you create a 1-1 white spirit creature token. The Abzan had a mechanic where they cared about your creatures having plus one plus one counters on them and gave them abilities if they did have a counter. So putting a 1-1 counter on each of your creatures obviously synergized pretty well with this mechanic. Each of the Ascendancies had an ability like this that synergized with the rest of the theme they were part of. Cycles in Magic are used to tell players what to expect from a certain theme, set, or color. They're a really powerful way to communicate these things to players without directly telling them, as not every player will be so plugged into the game. Lots of players will only ever learn about the game from buying packs and reading the cards, so a cycle is a great way to get them up to speed on the mechanics in a set or what the identities of the colors are. This is a technique for communicating ideas to players that the game has been using since the very first set of the game. And these cycles are where we'll be looking to see how wizards messed up handling Life King. In the very first set of Magic, there was a cycle of instants called the Boon Cycle. Each of these were one mana for three of something associated with the color. Going in order, the Blue Boon was Astral Recall, which has the effect where target player draws three cards. This card is one of the most broken cards of all time, and kind of shows you how far Magic the Gathering has come. The next most powerful card in the cycle was Dark Ritual, which costs a black mana and has the effect to add three black mana. This card has seen tons of play over the years in tons of different combo decks. Quick side note, the effect to add mana isn't considered a part of Black's color pie anymore, but we are digressing here. The third most powerful is Lightning Bolt, which is maybe the most balanced of the cycle. This costs one red and deals three damage to any target. This card is a staple that has seen tons of play in just about every format it's ever been legal in. The fourth best was Giant Growth, which costs a green mana and gives a target creature plus three plus three. This is a fine combat trick and has seen a decent amount of play over the years, but combat tricks are always limited in their use for a number of reasons. The final and by far worst member of the boon cycle was Healing Salve. This costs a white mana and has the effect where you can either gain three life or prevent the next three damage that would be dealt by any target. This card has never been good, even at the very start of the game. For a second example, let's look at the Reflection Cycle. This is a cycle of enchantments that each doubled something. The blue member of the cycle was Thought Reflection, which cost four and three blue and had the effect to double your card draw. The black one was Wound Reflection, which cost 5 and 1 black, and the ability where at the end of each turn, each opponent loses life equal to the amount of life they lost that turn. Next is Rage Reflection, that cost 4 and 2 red, and gives all of your creatures double strike, which allows creatures to deal combat damage for other creatures, and then hit again during the normal damage step, letting them hit for double damage. The green member of the cycle is Mana Reflection, which costs 4 and 2 green, and has the ability where whenever you tap a land for mana, you add an additional mana of that color. So alongside doubling the damage you deal to your opponents, doubling the cards you draw, doubling your combat damage versus creatures, and doubling your mana, what effect did wizards think was worth doubling for white's member of the cycle? Why, gaining life, of course. And of course, this is easily the worst member of the cycle. As ever, the card just had way more of an impact on the game if you played it. So why is gaining life being placed alongside all these other, better effects, and being the worst member of the cycle such a problem? Well, because it communicates the idea that gaining life is supposed to be as powerful as these other effects. Even worse, it also gives you the idea that gaining life is a unique effect that you could get for playing white. This created a really big problem for magic. White's identity as a color is pretty tied to gaining life at this point, and trying to change it isn't really an option. So, one of the five colors of magic has its identity pretty heavily tied to the mechanic that everyone, including wizards, knows that is inherently fairly weak. This is a big part of why white has such a bad reputation within the community. White is usually considered the weakest color in the game, at least in eternal formats like Legacy and especially Commander. People constantly joke about how white is the weak link. The problem has existed for a long time, but it didn't start out that way. At the conception of the game, ideas like card advantage weren't widely understood. Gaining life was initially thought of as an effect that rivaled these other effects, even by the designers of Magic itself. For a good example of this, let's look at the card Necropotence. This is an enchantment with a mana cost of 3 black and the abilities where you skip your draw step, whenever you discard a card you exile it, and you can pay 1 life to exile the top card of your library face down, and then put that card into your hand at the beginning of your next end step. This card was actually pretty panned at the time, with lots of players expecting the card to be pretty weak. After all, it has such huge downsides, and who would want to pay life to draw cards? As it turned out, this was one of the most powerful cards not only in the set it was released in, but possibly in the entire game. This amount of card advantage is pretty much impossible to overcome. 
and being able to draw this many cards would usually put you in a winning position during your next turn. Now, Kropotin's decks were easily the best decks in the game, and the Kropotin's is still banned in Legacy and restricted to one in Vintage to this day. This is usually remembered as a moment when the Magic community learned a very important lesson. The only life point that matters is the last one. Even Wizards themselves vastly underestimated the power of paying one life to draw a card. Since then, players have largely started to play fast and loose with their life totals, and life gain cards have largely been regarded as useless outside of pretty specific contexts. So it kinda makes sense that Wizards would accidentally put more stock in life gain as a mechanic than it deserved. Considering that they didn't realize how a card like Necropotence would have broken the game in half, it's not surprising that they originally thought a card like Healing Self would be as good as something like Ancestral Recall. It wasn't until the game had been out for a while that they started to realize how bad life gain was as an effect. Since then, Wizards has been working on ways to make life gain decks viable and more exciting. They found two ways to make life gain a better mechanic that people were excited to play. The first is by making it so that life gain isn't the only effect of a card, and the second is by introducing life gain synergies. Starting with the first method, how did Wizards make life gain cards better? Well, they've basically started stapling better effects onto life gain cards, while making gaining life still their main purpose. A great example of this is Revitalize. This is an instant with a mana cost of 1 and 1 white, with the effect where you gain 3 life and draw a card. This card is basically just a healing salve that draws you a card, and that was enough to make you go from garbage to a decent card that decks would play in standard. There were lots of turns where your opponent will deal about 3 damage to you in combat, so playing a card like Revitalize will basically undo their combat stat without making you give up a card, which can allow you to draw something like a removal spell or even better, a board wipe to get you back in the game. Rather than simply delaying the inevitable, these cards can often give you another turn to spend your mana and make a play that gets you back into the game. Another source of incidental life gain that Wizards has introduced is the lifelink keyword. This is a keyword that means that whenever the card lifelink, usually a creature, deals damage, you gain that much life. This keyword is a really nice source of life gain that often slots really nicely into a whole bunch of different decks. This is usually attached to creatures, which means you can simultaneously develop your board while also finding a way to gain extra life. On top of that, lots of cards that just so happen to gain you life have seen play over the years. For example, Scavenging Ooze is a 2-2 creature that costs 2 mana and has the ability where you can pay 1 green to exile a card from a graveyard, and if it's a creature card, you gain 1 life and put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. Ooze is a card that's mostly played to be a good creature that can get bigger over time and can mess with your opponent's graveyard. But gaining life was a nice upside to have alongside those other, more prominent card effects. Besides finding ways to give decks more incidental sources of life gain, Wizard has tried to make life gain more exciting by printing more life gain synergies. There are tons of cards like Dawn of Hope, which allows you to pay 2 any time you gain life to draw a card. Or cards like Voice of the Blessed, a 2 mana creature that gives you plus 1 plus 1 counter any time you gain life, and gains even more abilities as it gets more and more plus 1 plus 1 counters. This is only a couple of examples of the tons of cards that specifically give you payoffs for gaining more life. Another way that people have made life gain more useful is by using infinite life gain combos. For example, if you have a spike feeder, which has the ability where you can remove a plus one plus one counter from it to gain two life, and a card like Archangel of Thune, which has the ability where whenever you gain life, you put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control, you can remove a counter from Feeder to gain 2 life. This will trigger Archangel, which will put a counter back on Feeder, which will let you remove another counter from Feeder and repeat this process all over again. From there, you can simply loop this interaction over and over until you have what judges call an arbitrary large amount of life. What this means is that you can't actually perform an action an infinite number of times in Magic's rule systems, you can only perform a finite number of times that you choose, meaning you just name a number like a million and gain a large enough amount of life that your opponent will never be able to kill you. Once you gain this much life, you often win the game by default, as your opponent won't ever be able to actually win the game, so you have as much time as you want to either find a way to win, or you can just wait until your opponent decks themselves out, as long as they have less cards in the library than you do. Now, it's worth noting that your opponent can actually do infinite damage back to you with some sort of combo. They can get around your infinite life gain. Because you can only perform an action an arbitrary large number of times, whoever goes infinite second can just choose the bigger number. So if your opponent gains infinite life and you do infinite damage, you'll still kill them. But if you try to deal infinite damage to your opponent with a combo, and they gain infinite life in response, they'll survive by just naming a bigger number than you did. So Wizards has found ways to make these cards more playable, but the fundamental problem hasn't really changed. All these life gain synergy cards could care about just pretty much anything, like having creatures enter the battlefield or playing land. And in fact, there are decks built around these mechanics and they're often better than decks built around gaining life. One of the most successful decks built around gaining life was Soul Sisters, which was built around the cards Soul Warden and Soul's Attendant, 
which each have the ability where whenever another creature enters a battlefield under your control, you gain one life. So one of the best ways to make these life gain synergies was to use a card that made a different, easier condition, like having a creature enter the battlefield, cause you to gain life, and then build life gain synergies from there. The only pure life gain card that Dex played was Martyr of Sands, which could gain you three life for each white card in your hand, which was used only to put you over 30 life, so your Sarah Ascendant would get its buff. Outside of this specific interaction, pure life gain cards were pretty much always relegated to being sideboard tech for burn matchups. So, this is where life gain currently sits in Magic. It's a mechanic that's often a lot weaker than it may seem, like it should be based on how much emphasis the color pie puts on it. Wizards has responded by purposefully making life gain cards better, and they have seen competitive success, but that success is still a bit limited.